purpose and the intent of this module is to look at your leadership team as more than just seven people coming together to do individual jobs. This session is about actually moving beyond just your job functions into the reality of what does it mean and what does it take and what do you have to do to be a high functioning team? She comes from Roseville, California. Please welcome our distinguished Toastmaster Region One Advisor, Sandra Nunez. Welcome to Building a Healthy Team. And I love what Louisa just said in when she ended her talk, right? She said, some clubs may not be ready for the Distinguished Club Program, but I would invite you to consider what I believe every club is ready for. And that is a healthy club leadership team. And that's what this session is all about. All right, the so session objectives. Identify the, fi the five traits of a healthy team. Analyze your team's current state. Like what is going on with your team right now? What happened in the outgoing team? And how can you improve for the incoming team? Identify some behavioral styles of each team member and work to create a healthy team by building trust. In the chat, and I cannot see the chat right now, I'm gonna tell you, I'm learning like the rest of you. This is why we have Adam. In the chat, would you please type in some of the thoughts that you have on what are the traits of a healthy team to you? What does that mean like to you? Collaboration, supportive team members, um, collaborative, trust each other, respect, uh, trust, loyalty, trust, mm. lots of trust, honesty, communication, communication, to be vulnerable, listen to each other, diverse, integrity, open to feedback, respect, communication, integrity, service, and excellence. Have each other's back, patience, joining in, speak up, empathy, energy, encouraging. It is a safe place, support, safe to share and accept, passion, shared goals and vision, complementary skills, support each other. I love it. I love all of those things. And I wanted them to come from you because you're the people who are going to be in your club leadership team trying to figure out how your club, how your team can exhibit these traits and how they can help you have a successful club experience for your members. Now I'm gonna ask you to type in the chat, what do you think are some traits of an unhealthy team. A lot of us feel we've been on that kind of team. What is it that you're hoping not to have on your team this year? Poor leadership, conflict, be passive, ego, feel overworked, conflict, too rigid, negative side conversations, ego again, judgmental, finger pointing, discouraging, lack of support, blaming each other, frequent uh, disputes, negative micromanager, negative my way or the highway, people not doing what they should, uh, toxic relationships, favoritism, um, unkept agreements, lack of communication, the absence of fun, bullying. Ooh. Interesting. It's interesting how many people, and I mean all of us when I say how many, know exactly what we feel and what an unhealthy team looks like. like. I think we feel like we can spot it from a mile away. I find it interesting some of the words that were used that people think ego, overworked, leadership burnout is a real thing, especially in Toastmasters. 
Some of you are in clubs where this is going to be the second or third or 45th time that you have been the club treasurer. You have the same 8, 10, 12, 15 members. New members are coming and going for whatever reason, right? They've got jobs that they're getting, they're making moves, what have you. But the same leaders are the leadership team over and over and over again. And part of what having a healthy team is, I believe, is figuring out how to bring up more members from the club into the leadership team, how to help them choose to evolve until the next best part of themselves by taking part in the leadership team. And how we feel that happens is by taking responsibility, making a decision as the team, as the leaders, that you're going to operate in a healthy, safe manner, that you're not gonna operate within your ego, that you're not gonna allow each other to become overworked. Instead, you're gonna support one another, right? You're gonna to work together to create an environment where all of the team members can thrive and where all of the club members can thrive as well. Have your workbook in front of you. Take a few minutes, take some notes on some questions. We're going to be on page three of the participant workbook. There's, you're gonna spend five minutes completing the team assessment, and then there's gonna be a score sheet. And each one of those questions corresponds to a response in the team assessment score sheet. Take a look at your score, what you feel your team is doing right now. The club quality and the five traits that build the healthy team. We talked a lot about them already. You guys have a lot of amazing ideas on what they are. Here are five others. If you hadn't thought about them, I believe that we did bring up some, but you might find one or two that are new that you hadn't thought of before. The first one is trust. And trust, it, who said it? I hate these kind of things, but it, the first thing that popped into my mind, right? Trust is a must. We had a district governor here in District 39. Her name was Jackie Bates. And that is what she told us all the time. Trust is a must. Trust does not happen overnight. Right? Everybody just became elected to their club officer, area director, division director, district leader team. You don't know everyone all the time. You haven't been friends for a long time. And you automatically need to start thinking about how can you build trust with each other, right? Because when we're avoiding being overworked, when we are getting our egos out of the way, this is we are able to do that because we have built trust with each other. The trust starts at the very top with the club presidents. It continues with the next top, the area director, the division director, the district director. When I was a district director, I had two brand new teammates, so I understand what it is to work on teams where you do not know each other, you don't know each other's work styles, you don't know what to expect from them, and you need to get buy-in, right? The club president is the one who is setting the tone to get enough buy-in to get your club success plan together, right? To get enough buy-in so that everyone will want to come to the club because it's a fun, enriching place to be where people are learning and growing. So when you're the top dog, when you're the leader, it's up to you to be the most vulnerable on the team, right? It's up to you to admit when you made a mistake. It's up to you to admit that you don't know how to run your computer screen with sharing a PowerPoint and music at the same time. 
right? We all are human. We all do not know everything. Some of you club presidents, I know how you got here. You're the newest person in your club. I know because we've done that in my clubs too, right? The nine of us who have been there forever just don't want to do it anymore. And guess what? You're brand new and you don't know any better. So we said, please be the club president. We'll help you. We'll mentor you. We'll make sure you're a success. And you said yes. And then guess what? We forgot about our promise to mentor you. And we just told you to come to club officer training and you learn everything you need to know. So here's what you need to know, club presidents, that it's your job to set the tone of your team. And the basis of that team is trust. So whatever you have to do, whatever team building exercise, you want to, you go to dinner, you meet at your house for a potluck, whatever personality assessments or leadership style assessments that you can take. There's one at the end of this module in your workbook. We will not go through it in this module, but that is a good place to start when you have a brand new team and you all do not know what to do. So if you come away with nothing but one thing from this time that we've spent together, I hope that it'll be that the basis, the beginning of your strong team, of your healthy team, is to figure out how to build trust with each other. Trait number two, healthy conflict. This is something a lot of people have ideas about. I left these big words in the module, right? Healthy conflict, there are two types of conflict, destructive and constructive. Here's the kind that I like, none. <laughs> I don't know what you all feel. We all have different feelings about what healthy conflict is. And I'm gonna open up the chat and ask people if you would please take a moment to type in what you think is, what does that mean to you, healthy conflict? What does it look like in your club? So be honest, Here's some, here are some healthy traits. Focused on solutions, not on the personal. Agreement to have different views, right? That's a way that you can build trust up front at every level, whether it's your club success plan, your area success plan, your division success plan, agree on how you're gonna communicate with each other. We did this in my club last year for the first time. We created a, an actual club success plan. We got together and we decided how we would communicate with each other and how we would resolve disagreements. And everyone will do it different. In our club, we decided that we would vote on everything, just like Robert Rules of Order, right? Whatever, if everyone didn't have 100% buy-in or agreement up front, the leadership team would agree on it and if your vote was no, but the majority was yes, you agreed that you would support it. And that's another big part of building trust. Are things happening that maybe you don't agree with, but it's still your job to go along with them? But in healthy conflict, this is where you have the opportunity to state your opinion in a fair manner, in a non-accusatory manner, in a way that shows respect. I love this. Having a different point of view and feeling confident to express that, acceptance by the teams to listen to new and different ideas. Ideas on your team and your club may not just come from the 20 year member. Maybe those ideas have been past their prime and maybe a brand new idea is gonna come from a newer member. Maybe not. But it's our job to listen. So when you're inviting these brand new leaders, brand new club officers who have been in your club for three months, I know it's happening. It's happening in mine too. We have to empower them and give them every possible opportunity for success. So we need to respect each other and work with each other and listen to each other as we're learning and growing. Now that we've seen what we believe is constructive, Put in some ideas of what you think are destructive conflict. Like what happens 
in your club leadership team that is a destructive force of nature. And while not everybody will admit that they happen, they do because your club used to be 30 members and now they have 10. Okay, so what are some ideas, if you wanna put it in the chat, of some destructive conflict. Ooh, no enthusiasm. Procrastination, no enthusiasm. Contempt. Emotions. One person dictates rather than seeking shared ideas. Domineering members. Interruption. Taking it personal. People not listening to each other. Interrupting saying I'll do something, but not doing it. Too casual, secrets. Yes, and there's something that I just, something, who said it? Don't take it personal. This, that one phrase right there reminds me of something that we learned last year in training, and it is called assume positive intent. I want you to write it down if you have opportunity to write it somewhere. Assume positive intent, okay? Everybody is stressed, right? Everybody is stressed. People are on your teams that don't know what to do and they leave training confused. There's a lot of information that we're giving you today and we're asking you to sit at your desk without other humans around you to learn. We're not able to be in teams and interact with each other physically. And this gets tiring, right? People don't always have opportunity to fulfill their obligation to your club in the manner that you would like them to, right? They may not do their public relations job exactly the way that they said. And it's up to us as leaders to not just have the first thing coming out of your mouth. Well, you just ain't getting your job done. Well, you just didn't prepare enough. Well, you just aren't doing good enough, right? I love this term that lots of people have been sharing with me lately about our program called um, experiential learning, right? This is where we're learning and growing. And John Davis, who I served with TRIO with a number of years used to say it like this, it may resonate with you and it may not, but he would say that Toastmasters isn't the real world, as in this isn't our paying job, right? This isn't the family members that we have to go home to and face real life crisis with when we are losing our jobs and when we are having babies and we are having our kids go to school and involved in everything outside of Toastmasters. Toastmasters, he would say, is the place where we would learn, we learn how to be better in our real lives and in our real jobs. And a big part of participating in healthy conflict and in building trust is assuming positive intent, for one, and showing grace. You won't see that on any slide in this presentation, but working hard to show grace to your team members goes a long way to building the kind of team that you're looking to build. Okay. The third trait is commitment. Now commitment can mean different things to different people, right? We all don't work at the same level. You may have a club officer who is retired and Toastmasters is their full-time job. You may have a club officer who is a brand new mom and a full-time employee working outside of her home. You may have a club officer who is a father who's working two or three jobs just to put food on the table or going to college at night while they're working and they're raising their family and they're trying to 
gain leadership experience by serving as an officer in your club. What I hope that you'll take away from the idea of commitment is that that may mean something different to each member of the team. And in building your healthy team, it's important to understand and ask, what is your commitment level, right? Sandra, when you say you're going to be the public relations officer this year, which I am, what can you really do? And can you put a timetable around it so that we know that you've committed to updating the club Facebook page every week, updating the club web page every week, creating something on an electronic calendar board every week. Please keep in mind that if it feels like somebody's not keeping the commitment level as you are, and here's an example, right? Carol was late to club again. Gosh darn you, Carol, why can't you ever get to club? I don't even think you care about this club because you're late again. Now, Carol, I know that I was late to club, but I got stuck in traffic. I know that I was late to club, but my mom called me right when I was walking in and I had to take that phone call, right? I'm blaming Carol for her lack of commitment that is equaling my behavior. But I have an excuse for my behavior, but I'm not willing to show grace to Carol, right? I'm expecting more of her and her commitment that I'm allowing for myself. And that is something to think about when you are a club leadership team and you're getting buy-in for your team members to attend even a monthly club leadership meeting. Right? I have a club leader in my club right now. I'm the president. Since COVID-19 hit, we hosted a club leadership meeting in March, and I did not host one in April or May. And let me tell you, I heard about it last week. And she didn't come out and say, Sandra, you're being the worst president ever because we haven't had a club leadership meeting in two months and I don't know what's going on. What she said in a tone of voice that I understood is whenever we have our next club leadership meeting, this is what's gonna come up, right? But because I know that it's important to her, I am able, and because we're all under stress, I was not offended by what she said. She's right, we should have, had, we should have at least tried to have club leadership the last two months. And so we're absolutely are gonna have one now, right? So just because she said it the way she said it didn't mean exactly the way it sounded. It meant that she's hurting for a leadership committee call and could we please have one? She just didn't know how to say it that way. Okay. So trait number three, commitment. What's your commitment? And show grace to each other. Ooh, trait number four, accountability. Would anyone be willing to type in the chat what does accountability mean to you? What does that look like in your club? If you're feeling you're most comfortable with everybody being accountable in the club, what does it look like? Following through on promises, doing what you say you're going to do. Uh, yeah, lots of doing what you say you're gonna do. Coming up, uh, owning up to mistakes, admitting when you fall short, uh, again, doing what you say you're going to do, doing what you promised, do what you say you're going to do, being reliable, do what you say you will, when you say you will, primary integrity, agree mm -hmm. together on actions, asking mm -hmm. for help when you need it, mm -hmm. being prepared to commit, being able to ask for help when you need it, taking responsibility, uh, asking for help. Documenting actions and follow-ups, doing duties that are expected and going above and beyond, persistence, modeling the behavior you want to see. Wow, there are a lot of, there's a lot of thoughts on 
holding people accountable. It's easy to think that I need to hold my teammates accountable, right? That's the easy way out. Wow. Wow, Louisa, you said you were going to have that done by last week. That, that was three months ago. I am still waiting. Now, I know that you're waiting for that thing that I told you I was going to get done in December because we're supposed to have a party in June. And I'm going to get around to it, but I'm going to get around to it once you finally get what you said you were going to do done. Those are the mindsets of people working together who haven't worked hard to build trust with each other, right? They just start accusing. You said you were going to do this. You said you were going to do that. When you're working to build your healthy team this year and in your club success plan, your club charter, you're creating what accountability looks like, I would again invite you to remember to show grace and to ask questions. A lot of unexpected things are happening to people right now. And just because they said they could do it by tomorrow, something may have come up that you don't know about. So if someone is not getting done what they said, please pick up the phone and ask them about it, right? Ask them what's going on. Because you all agreed that you would hold each other accountable, you'll also agree that when things are not getting done that you can call each other and talk about it. Right? These are how healthy teams work. They don't just start firing emails off to everybody. I don't know if you've ever been on the receiving end of that. Here's a tip. Don't put anything in email until after you've discussed it with someone first because it doesn't show intent in an email. And even if I could say to Carol, Carol, you're the greatest leader ever. I think you walk on water. There's going to be somebody who takes that to mean that I have just put out a religious slate to them. Right? I intended to explain to Carol how amazing I think she is and that I think she is miraculous. How it came out or how someone chose to assume intent, which just isn't their fault, it's not a judgment, it just happens, is that it was an insult to them. Right? So when you're being accountable to each other, because you've agreed upon it in advance, call each other when there's a question. Assume positive intent. I don't want to assume that Louise is not getting her job done just because she doesn't want to get her job done. And I don't want her to assume that I didn't follow through on what I said just because it didn't get done at 8 a.m. on June 30th instead of 11 p.m. on June 30th because we agreed on June 30th. But the time might be up for interpretation. Okay. All right. That's accountability, trust, healthy conflict, commitment, accountability, and results. The bottom line for having a healthy club and a healthy team and healthy atmospheres is we're looking for results, right? That could mean many different things. And I'd love for you all to see what some of you think about results. So when you think about your club this year, any kind of results. I don't care if it's numeric, conceptual, any kind of results. What kind of results are you hoping your teams are going to achieve this year? If you'd be willing to type them in the chat. Member satisfaction. More members giving speeches. quality meetings, more prepared speeches, member growth, achieve shared goals, member retention, new members, new member engagement, leaving the club better than you found it, be a fun environment where all can share, having more educational goals achieved, more value in meetings, member experience, find out why members came, more membership, more uh, member attendance, everyone improving, members supporting each other, recognizing the value of Toastmasters, achieved goals in DCP, more frequent involvement of mentors, new members achieving their first 
free speeches. Oh, I love it. I love the fact that people, leaders, that you are talking about what you want for the members of your club. And you want them for yourself too. You want a positive learning experience where everyone is empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, right? The mission of our clubs, that's the results that we're going for. The results will equate to dashboard success, right? Because your club is a place where members want to visit. They say yes, because as soon as they walked in the door and experienced your amazing meeting, you asked them to join the club because you assigned a mentor to them after they joined to explain the program and encourage them, whether you're meeting online or in person, to start on their education program right away. One of my favorites is to ask people what they came for. Every club member comes for something different. And if you're looking for positive results in your club, one of the most important things you can do is ask people why they're there and give them what they came for. That was the mission and the vision of my club this year as club president was that every member would get what they came for. I don't know that we fulfilled it in every sense to every member, but it was what drove what we were doing this year and drove how we wanted to improve our club. So when you think of results, think of what people have come for and what you can give them. And then give it to them in any way that you can. All right, so those were the five traits of a healthy club, right? Building trust. Remember this corny phrase, trust is a must, right? It is the cornerstone of what we're doing in a healthy team. Because of the way that the exercise worked, we didn't really take the time to go through who's does what, whose trait is what on the DISC personality trait, but I would encourage you to start there with your new club leadership team. In your very first team meeting, bring out some type of personality assessment, whether it's the one in this training module or whether it's any of the ones that you choose. My team used 16personalities.com. It's a free assessment, www. 16personalities.com and how that helped us is right away we wanted to figure out how people work right not everyone on the team wants a 13 page email on what the next club meeting is going to be my friend Zach can't read more than five bullet points in an email and if you send more than that he won't read it and he won't know what's going on some people can't stand bullet points. There's not enough information in there for them and they need you to be specific, right? Remember I used the example of this project is due on June 30th? Well, not everybody agrees on what June 30th really means, right? To Carol, that might be 6 a.m. when she gets up because she needs all day to have all the information because it's due by midnight so she needs all day to get everything compiled and make sure we all have our information in. But to me, the person that's sending it to her, June 30th means 11.59 p.m. Pacific time. <laughs> well, that didn't help her at all because she had to get her work done by noon, right? So these are the things that we need to know about each other. Do you use text message? Some of our leaders will only respond through text message or Facebook Messenger or Instagram Messenger. Some people don't look at their email for a week. Can you believe that? But it's true. That's how they operate. So you need to know who the people are on your team in order 
to build a healthy team. And so that's what I want to leave you with. And <laughs> I just changed my mind. That's why you saw that. Oh, what am I going to do now? I actually just want to invite people to either share comments or ask any questions that they have about building a healthy team in your club atmosphere, or if you have any questions for your trio about this subject. Somebody asked the, the, ref, the website that I referenced, www.16personalities.com. <laughs> yeah, so we actually had a comment and he said, one of my biggest problems is many of our members don't even read or check their email. Then I'm forced to reach out to everyone uh, to get the information I need. Do you have any suggestions about this? Maybe as related to what you talked about. That is a true statement at every level, right? We have so much information. So I think for me, the question is, what is it that we're asking? Like, are we just giving information to them? Or are we asking them a question? And then keep in mind that, that people finally get what you want them to understand after seven times of hearing it, reading it, listening to it. So I have now made it a point to assume positive intent in that when people don't read the very first email that I sent them, that's because of whatever reason, but it's okay because I'm gonna give an announcement in my club about it and I'm gonna share it in a different place and I'm gonna invite them to understand it again and I might pick up the phone and call them. And then after the seventh time, we may or may not have come to an understanding on it. And, and that's okay. So that's how I feel about what we're doing here. People have so much going on, right? I heard, I heard from so many people like, I am dying in a blizzard of email. And so I would also ask them, is there a better way to communicate with you? Right? Where will the information not get lost? Is it on a text message? Right? Because you don't have tons? Is it in a Facebook messenger? How can I communicate with you so that this will work for the both of us? The purpose and the intent of this module is to look at your leadership team as more than just seven people coming together to do individual jobs. Right? The president calls a meeting, the VP of Ed has tons of committees and everybody needs a mentor and we got to schedule meetings all the time and the VP of PR does this and I'm just like, this session is about actually moving beyond just your job functions into the reality of what does it mean and what does it take and what do you have to do to be a high functioning team? So yes, Louisa, I agree. Not every club is ready for the Distinguished Club Program. Thank you for recognizing that. I do believe that every club can benefit from its leaders being willing to build a healthy team. Please like this video and subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification bell on the little right hand side to make sure you stay up to date with new videos as we post them up to our channel over the course of the next year.